So this one was interesting, and I already all, already answered that uh, via email, but I wanted to bring it to everybody's attention, see what they thought. So uh, this was from Michael, and I blocked out his information because you know don't want to share any of that. I'm not Ledger. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, sir. I hope all is well. I'm seeking your financial advice on an investment. Here's my background. I have a small business food industry that is failing miserably thanks to COVID. That does suck. I need to somehow save it. I have 100K to invest that probably I can stay without for one year. I'm torn between investing in Cardano or Voyager. I need what will give me the best return over a one year period. Uh, it may be a long shot, but any help directing me would make a difference. Thanks for your help, Michael. So, so first of all, Michael, let me come here, uh, talk to you real quick. Uh, I'm not a financial planner. I can't give you any financial advice. I just can't. I can't tell you what to do, especially with your business. That's a, a deeply um, personal decision that you have to make what's best for you and your family and your business. I can say this. If it was me and um, this happened to me, well, first of all, you have to understand as a business owner, uh, the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, round two had just been ruled out. So talk to your bank about that uh, because that's exactly what I did. I called out my bank. I said, hey, they just rolled that out. So what's the process? They emailed me over some, uh, some forms that I filled out and I'm going to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program. So that's one thing that I am doing. I'm not saying that you should do that, but definitely you might I want to take a look at that. I don't think that's financial advice. That's just, that's just uh, something to look into. Uh, so that is the first part. The second part is, it, if my business is struggling, first I'd take a look at my business. So with with COVID, there's a lot of businesses that are, that are definitely struggling. So you have to understand, like, I just went out last night, me and my wife, and we went to a place called Julio's right down the street. Great place. And uh, it was a 30-minute wait for the restaurant to get in. 30 minutes. So wherever you're at, I don't know how destitute it is as far as covid Sometimes you have to take a look, a real hard look at your business and say, am I doing the right things? Am I attracting the right customers? Am I doing the right things to stay competitive in post COVID-19? And they were doing a lot of different things as far as, you know, separation and they spaced everything out. So, you know, even though there was a long wait, maybe they also are hurting. So that is, that is really that part. The, the, the other part is, the sound principles is, it doesn't matter how great your product is. Um, I hate to say this, but really it comes down to marketing. And I'm gonna give you a prime example. You sitting there watching this video, what is the best hamburger in your town? What is it like a, like a Bronco's Burgers or Dave's or, you know, uh, Jerry's best burger down the street or whatever else? What, who has the best burger in your town? Well, I don't know where you live and I don't even know what country you're at, but I can tell you right now, uh, the most popular burger uh, is McDonald's because uh, they serve billions and billions and they wipe out any other different place that you have in your local town. And that's who's there mostly. And the reason why they do it so well is because they are masters at marketing and land ownership. Really, it's land ownership. Uh, everywhere you go, they're there. Also, uh, you'll see them on social media, you see them on commercials, you see them everywhere, and they're just a juggernaut because marketing. Are they the best food for you? Absolutely not. They are delicious though, <laughs> but not real good if, you want to, if you're working for your apps, that's for sure. So take a look at, am I marketing enough? And then to get to your question, um, what would I do with 100,000 between Cardano and Voyager? Well. First of all, I think Voyager has a huge upside potential, and I've talked about this in a couple of different videos, and uh, I will link them at the very end. Uh, but if I had to make a choice between those two, uh, I would put uh, Voyager 60%, Cardano 40%. And would I invest 100,000? No, probably not. Because you have to understand, if I have 100,000, and that's what is my family is depending on that, you have to realize that with cryptocurrency, we could lose 80% of the value tomorrow. And that's a reality. That's a reality. Something could happen, some other crazy thing that pandemic, who knows what could happen, right? We saw this in March. There was a huge dip. So if you're depending on that to pay bills and put food on the table, I would not put in a cryptocurrency because you never know. However, in the long run, to dollar cost average in, I would do that. I would probably take 100,000. And the first thing I would probably do is I would take if I had a hundred thousand, depending on there's so many variables, I would probably put a thousand dollars into uh, act, let's say a thousand twelve hundred bucks into Voyager, and I put eight hundred dollars into Cardano and see what happens, and then I would go from there, and then I would probably think about every couple of days to investing and see where things go, or I could do uh, what uh, me and Diddy talked about, 
Yeah. Diddy went all in. I do more dollar cost averaging for the long haul. Or I just, we call it the uh, triple D, uh, triple DCA, which is uh, Diddy Dan dollar cost average. So instead of just taking it one lump or over years, you just take six, your whole wad, whatever it is. Let's say that I say I have 100,000. Maybe I take, tw let's make uh, six times three, 18. Let's say $24,000, okay? 24,000, and I'm going to put uh, two, three, four, six, and yeah, I'm gonna take $4,000 today and I'm gonna split up between Cardano and Voyager. And then in two more weeks, I'm gonna take $4,000, I'm gonna split between Cardano and Voyager. And then two more weeks and two and two and two. So that way, if you do something like that, if you look at the, at the charts, especially if I would've done this in 2017 and just took all my money, let's say I had 100,000, and instead of going in the, like towards the top, if I would've said, okay, I'm gonna take, uh, you know, what, 20%, and I'm gonna put it in on day one, two weeks later, I'm gonna put 20%, Two weeks later, 20%. Well, that's actually fit, but whatever. Math. So I could have really spread that out. Now, if you want to ask me what I would do as far as like safety, Cardano and Voyager, you never know, right? I think Voyager is going to be a big play, but what we just talked about in the very first article, if I want to be very safe, I put a lot in Bitcoin, I put a lot into Ethereum, and then I would scale down and I would probably look at Voyager, Cardano, Polkadot, Chainlink and however you want to do that. So that is essentially uh, my what I would do. Again, not investment advice. These are the things. And there's many options for you to do. But the big thing is just be careful. Sound money principles. Uh, take a look at your business first. Paycheck protection program, marketing. What am I doing post-COVID? And then go from there. All right, so uh, that is it. Thanks a little bit longer on a Saturday. Uh, but a lot, of, a lot of things go on, what can I say? So if you like types of videos, there'll be two more that's going to pop up on uh, your left and right. And uh, that is all. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.